After Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed the entire creation. In Genesis 3.15, as He's cursing creation, He gives us hope. And that hope is that He's going to crush the seed of the serpent by means of the seed of the woman. And I think, frankly, that's the entire Bible in one verse. Every narrative basically after that is leading us up to the day when God and Christ would come to restore what Adam lost. And it's interesting to me, one of the first narratives that we get after sin entered creation is Cain mur murdering his brother. We, we see injustice. And, and so then part of what the restoration is, I think is both cosmological and individual. So God is going to restore the entire cosmos, which means He's going to recreate the universe and bring about a new heaven and a new earth. But until that final eschaton, when Jesus comes back and He restores this fallen creation and makes it better than what it was in, in Eden, He is also transforming individuals' hearts to live in a reconciled way so that we will reflect that kingdom which is yet to come. So then reconciliation fundamentally is, I think, God vertically reconciles us to God through Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, Jesus died to reconcile Jews and Gentiles into one new man. But He's also horizontally reconciling us to each other. Jesus reconciled Jews and Gentiles to God and to each other to be one new man. So then reconciliation means not that we simply get together. You don't need Jesus to get together with different people. But it means that we are unified in Christ and we are working together, living together in love and spirit-empowered love and we are legitimately concerned about the needs of one another. So I don't think it's possible in a Christian context to talk about reconciliation without likewise talking about justice. So if people are really reconciled to God and to each other, that then means that Christians should live out that reconciliation in real ways, which means that we, we care about all human life, which means we, we care about our neighbor, we love our neighbors, we care about the dignity of those who are created in the image of God. That means we care about things like economic inequality and these sorts of things. That doesn't mean you're justified by um, economic quality, equality, but that does mean that the gospel transforms us holistically and it enables us to live in a community with people who are from all sorts of different groups, both marginalized and non-marginalized. And so then if reconciliation has taken place, then there's going to be some justice close behind or, or, or close beside of that reconciliation. It might also mean that we, we speak out against racism uh, and, and the different ways racism manifests itself in our churches, not just with people using racist rhetoric, but also in, in our assumptions and our implicit biases and microaggressions and also how we uh, interact with people on a day-to-day -day -day basis. So, so justice it can manifest itself in a variety of ways, but I would argue true reconciliation will always be accompanied with, with justice. Like, like, like true faith will always be accompanied with obedience. The two are not exactly the same, but you, you'll never see faith without some kind of obedience close beside it. You'll never see reconciliation without justice. Those two go together.